Hi, this is Pastor Darrell Myatt from Keller, Texas. Today is Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's a lot of things happening these days. There's so much going on around the world that God's Word has told us about, yet so many people are so blind to this truth or they're just so focused on something else they don't even see it. Iran once again saying they're ready to wipe the Zionist regime off the map. How many times is the world going to be okay with Iran speaking mass genocide and the world just sits by and just shrugs their shoulders and goes, eh, what are you going to do? You know, if for any reason the Israeli government ever issued a declaration like this about destroying Iran in half an hour, like Iran recently said about Israel, We'd never hear the end of all the criticism from all the parts of the world. The European Union would take measures against Israel. There would be emergency meetings at the United Nations Security Council to slander Israel and what they're saying. Countries pledging their support for Iran. Yet Iran can say, yeah, we're going to destroy Israel in less than half an hour. And the world is silent. There's crickets. Nothing. Israel's been bullied and criticized by the same international community for just taking precautionary measures to defend its citizens, as any country would or should. And for some reason, Iran, the Islamic Republic, is getting a free pass for constantly threatening to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Now, the Bible tells us that the whole world will be against Israel. Welcome to Bible Prophecy. It's happening, people. It's here. It's these double standards. I mean, it's either horribly lopsided injustice, selective amnesia, or just the normal double standards we're used to seeing. Guess, guess we're going to watch a lot of things that we think are horribly wrong, but they have to happen because God's Word says it would. Here we're watching things that are lining up, I think, to put the Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel 39 players in position. Out of the Times of Israel, Netanyahu reveals site where Iran experimented on nuclear weapons development. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, Hey, Iran has a secret nuclear facility where they're producing nukes. Sure enough, he was right. Out of the Times of Israel, UN Atomic Watchdog confirms Iran installing advanced centrifuges. They, they found uranium levels high at this secret facility. Israel keeps knocking out these kind of places with these precision strikes. At some point, Iran is going to say, you know what, enough's enough. Let's go get these guys. Let's stop talking about it and let's start doing it. How long until we see that event that causes Iran to respond with exactly what God told us would happen in Ezekiel 38? How long? Seems like it's knocking at the door to me. I don't know about you guys, but it seems very close. Out of the Jerusalem Post, Iran building large-scale military base in Syria. What do you suppose they're going to use that for? <laughs> so they can be that much closer to Israel, so they can strike so much easier. So they can launch some of their guided missiles, precision bombs, to hit Israel. Israel has some of the most advanced intelligence-gathering people. They know about these things. This military base Iran is building isn't close to Damascus. I keep thinking, you know, some of these things are going to coincide. I think Damascus being destroyed, as Isaiah 17 1 speaks of, could be part of what causes Iran to fulfill Ezekiel 38. 
Maybe Iran builds a military base in and around Damascus, and Israel takes that out, causing the complete destruction of Damascus. I mean, Damascus is already about 80% destroyed. They've been fighting there a civil war for some eight years now. Hmm. It's coming. One way or another, it's coming because God said it would, so it will. Out of Israel, Hayom, Iraq says, pro-Iranian military base reportedly hit in a drone strike. An unmanned aerial vehicle reportedly destroys a weapons depot belonging to pro-Iranian Shiite militias in the country's west. Less than 24 hours after a mysterious airstrike killed 18 pro-Iranian militants on the Syria-Iraq border. Syrian official claims Israeli planes used Jordanian airspace in that attack and were aided by U.S. forces stationed in Syria. We hold the Americans and Israelis responsible for these acts of aggression which crossed the red line, said the official. Oh, you can say you're going to wipe an entire country off the face of the earth. That's not crossing red lines. Israel will do what they have to do to protect their people. They will. And whether you agree with their tactics or not, you might feel differently if you were the one being targeted and Israel was fighting to protect you. You probably yourself live in an area where you're free to do what you want, free to say what you want, free to worship as you want, and no one's ever tried to kill you just because of who you are. This is what Israel lives with. They're surrounded by nations that hate her. Surrounded by people who seek to kill the Jewish people. Surrounded by people who love what Hitler did to the Jews. Unless you're Jewish, you've probably never faced this kind of persecution. In Israel, never forget is something they'll never forget. Unlike here in America, tomorrow will be 18 years since 9-11 happened, and we vowed on that day to never forget. And now today, some 18 years later, we have dozens of Muslims in our government seeking to bring us down from within. Seems like millions of people have already forgotten in America. They don't come here to try to make America great. They try to come here to take America down. Islam and democracy don't mix. It's like oil and water. You've heard people like um, Ilhan Omar say, yeah, we will never integrate. We will never assimilate. We'll, we'll never be pro-American. That's not their agenda. They're here to destroy us. Don't believe me? Why would Ilhan Omar be calling for us to dissolve Homeland Security? Oh, y'all need to dissolve and defund Homeland Security. Really? Why? So our guard will be down again and you can come with a bigger strike? I'm amazed at all these people that are voting for Muslims in our government. Amazed. But... Is what it is. Out of the Jewish News Syndicate, prompted by Iran, Palestinian Islamic Jihad plays lead role in Gaza escalation. Palestinian Islamic Jihad is challenging Hamas, which is less interested in an escalation or full-out war with Israel and more interested in reaching an arrangement to prevent an economic collapse of the Gaza Strip and avoid the risk of popular rebellion against its Islamist regime. Interesting. People in Gaza say, you know what, we're tired of all you doing is spending money to fight Israel. How about you spend that money to advance us? There's a thought. Huh. Interesting story here out of United with Israel. Netanyahu requests clear mandate to apply sovereignty over Jordan Valley, Judea, and Samaria. One week, Israel will hold their elections. Netanyahu is asking for a clear mandate to apply sovereignty 
over the Jordan Valley and the Dead Sea area, and eventually over Judea and Samaria. Wow. Wow. Times we're living in, people. These are the times we're living in. Out of CBN, Orthodox Church in America fires priest for praying for Israel, calling out Christian anti-Semitism. A church fired a priest because he prayed for Israel. Wow. I mean, have they forgotten? that God commands us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem in Psalm 122 verse, is that verse one? How, how am I forgetting that one? That's a biggie. Um, I think it's 122 verse seven. Have to look, sorry, uh, temporary brain malfunction. Um, 122 verse six, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. They shall prosper that love Jerusalem. The Bible tells us in Zechariah that Jerusalem will become a burdensome stone at the times of the end. Hmm. Wow. Here's one of those stories you just love to see. I do anyway. Out of Times of Israel, tiny first temple seal impression found with name of Bible era royal steward. This little seal inscribed with belonging to Adoniah, royal steward, was excavated, excavated at the foundation of the Western Wall. Adoniah. That name can be found in Nehemiah 10, 16. It's also in 2 Samuel 3, verse 4, Adoniah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth, 1 Kings 1, 18, And now, behold, Adoniah reigns, and now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. Jonathan answered and said to Adoniah, 1 Kings 1, 43, Verily our lord King David hath made Solomon king. They found a seal that belonged to him, the base of the Temple Mount. Once again, confirming Jewish presence for thousands of years that so many people deny. Let's get into the word. In Luke, Luke 1, verse 37, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing's impossible with God. You know, there's times in our lives when we aren't recognized for the good that we do, right? But the Bible gives us this promise. Your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly, Matthew 6, verse 4. You'll be rewarded for every act of kindness, for every word of testimony that you gave on behalf of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6.10 tells us, For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is always present. He's always at work in our lives as Christians, whether we feel him or not. You know, the good news is it's not about our feelings. We can see this in the book of Esther, where the hand of God is very evident on every page. He was at work in the lives of Esther. He was at work in the life of Mordecai and the Jewish people. He worked through such ordinary human events as insomnia or the reading of a book or a man's anger. He worked through the timing of those events also. So no matter what you're facing right now, understand this. God is at work. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't forsaken you. You might think, well, I don't see him. Well, he's at work. You might think, well, I don't feel him. Well, he's at work. He's working behind the scenes. He promises that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, who would become the mother of Jesus, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Nothing's impossible. 
God can take what you think is an impossible situation and turn it around for his glory. So maybe you're facing an impossible situation today. Maybe you feel like the deck is stacked against you. Maybe you feel like you've given up hope. Let me tell you something, people. God can change all that. Nothing is impossible with God. Your financial situation, not impossible. Your medical situation, not impossible. Your relationship situation, not impossible. Trust God and let's follow after him and seek after him in all things, all areas of our lives. In Mark 16, Mark 16, verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. This is a commandment from Christ himself. You go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How are you doing fulfilling that? <laughs> I've had some interesting situations over the past weekend where I found myself witnessing to people who probably didn't think they were going to be witnessed to that day. Um, I find myself in these situations where I'm talking to a total stranger who's wanting to argue with me about something, and I tell them about Jesus. You know, I think each of us need to realize that God has a special calling on our lives, because he does. You were created for a reason, for a purpose. Now, you might not sense that God has led you to become a missionary or a preacher or a pastor, but you still have a calling. And it's a mission that you can't decline. This isn't Mission Impossible, where they say, Your mission, Jim, should you decide to accept it, is to preach the gospel. No. It's a mission, whether you decide to accept it or not. God has given us each a mission, a reason, a job. As ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of the kingdom, we're here to share. We're here to teach. We're here to shine the light of Christ into the darkness of this world. We're here to share the good news of the only one who can save them from their sins. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, one of the last things that would happen prior to the end would be the preaching of the gospel all over the world. I'm here to do my part. How about you? I'm here to share with as many people as will listen, anywhere, everywhere, <laughs> whenever. Um, several times in scripture, Jesus calls his followers to go into all the world to be witnesses for him. That's exactly what he's saying to us today. God's word is alive and well. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's not meant for a specific time. It's timeless. It's meant for everyone. He's calling you to be his witness. And you can begin right where you are, right in your home. There can be no doubt, people, you are called. You're called. If you're a follower of Christ, you are called into service. Maybe you're not listening to his voice. Maybe you have ignored that call. Maybe you sent him to voicemail. You need to respond to that call. God has put specific people in your path who need to hear what he's done for you, who need to see how you respond in times of trouble. They need to hear about the blessings and the peace of God. They need to know that God loves them and that he has a future of hope for them. So be bold in Christ Jesus. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind, Paul tells us in Timothy. We need to pray for those who have needs in their lives. We need to be a witness of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. This is your calling. The work of the ministry that God has entrusted to you. 
Will you step up to the call? Will you answer that call? Will you respond? You know what? We need to meet, uh, make the most of our time. None of us know when our time might be over. In Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, starting in verse 1, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. You know, time's a very precious commodity. You can't earn more of it. You can't reuse what you've already used. Once it's spent, it's gone forever. And as cool as time travel movies are, <laughs> you get the point, right? Time is very valuable. That's why no amount of money, no amount of possessions, no amount of success can equal the value of time. We don't have control over the length of time we'll be allowed in this life. God alone is sovereign over the number of our days, Psalm 139, verse 16. So if you want to know your true value system, look at how you spend your time. I mean, for the committed follower of Jesus, activities and pursuits reflect a life lived for him. Time in the Word. Time sharing the Word. Time telling others about Christ. So what do we need to do to live wisely? I think, first of all, we need to realize that without Christ, we have no inheritance in God's kingdom. The Savior offered himself as a sacrifice to God so that all who would believe in him could be forgiven and receive eternal life. Without salvation, guess what? All your time is wasted. As God's beloved child, we need to imitate him. We need to imitate Christ. We need to walk in love. We need to turn from sin. We need to try to learn what's pleasing to the Heavenly Father. Imitation requires that you know the Lord, you know his ways, you know his desires, as revealed to us in Scripture. We need to make the most of our time. You know, thoughtlessly moving through life results in hours spent on endeavors that are, in an eternal sense, useless, fruitless. The Apostle Paul warns us to be wise in making the most of opportunities. Life is not about how long you live but about whether you're living for Christ or living for self. It's never too late to change direction. We need to put our trust in God, ask him for guidance, ask him for wisdom and discernment, ask him to be able to use us to guide his people. Let God direct our time. I know a lot of people that 
waste a lot of their time. Whether they're spending their days playing video games or in a drunken stupor or doing drugs or whatever else might be a worthless use of time, we need to make the most of our time and spend it wisely seeking to please the Lord and to tell others about the only one who can save them. That's what we need to do with the time we have left. Are you obedient? Are you doing what Jesus said? Go, tell every creature, tell everyone the good news. Go. It's a commandment, people. It's not a suggestion. Go. It's time to get busy, people. Share the good news of the gospel with as many as you can until the day you stand before the only one who saves us. I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again tomorrow.